one corporate landlord reportedly made $10.1 billion last year. And the CEO of another corporate landlord corporation made $25.9 million last year in compensation. So is this the reason why rents are so high? Let's talk about it. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Reality Check with Jess. If this is your first time with me, thank you so much for joining me. And if you are a subscriber or returning viewer, hi, guys. So let's get into this, okay? Um, this actually was brought on by a comment that I received, and I loved it because they used the term greedflation. And I'm gonna show you some receipts. I'm gonna show you the proof of what's going on. So I had a subscriber, Dom, hey Dom, uh, they wrote a comment and said, they wanna blame stimulus or supply chain issues slash knock on effects of the shutdowns, but there's no chance in heck it was mostly greedflation. These greedy MFs don't want to pay their employees to keep up and cutting C-suite pay is a non-starter. We need a massive general strike, every industry at once. And you know what, Don, you're on to something um, because the C-suite pay is out of control. One of the things I talked about in my last video was the fact of they are not paying employees more. We, we know that they're not, but the executives are getting more money. And I did have another comment where someone was asking like, hey, you know, do you think maybe this is just because they lost some money during the pandemic? They did not lose money during the pandemic. They made money. In fact, there were literally no losses for these corporate landlords, because if you remember, all of them got paid. People were not getting the money directly to them. And if they did, they had to give it to the landlord, right? So the whole purpose of even the rep relief and everything was to help the landlord. It's just by effect of it, people were getting help. But even then, it was really paying back rent. Some of them would pay maybe a few months in advance, like, uh, you know, a month to max three months in advance. And that was about it. Otherwise, you were on your own. Um, so this was all about making sure that they got paid. They did not lose. They were set up to win and to not lose. When you look here, I wanna bring up the corporation that actually is the property management for the building that I live in, Cushman and Wakefield. Cushman and Wakefield right here, they are among the world's largest commercial real estate services firm. And they had revenues of $10.1 billion in 2022. Does that sound like a company that's losing money or that's struggling or is trying to come back from the pandemic? Not to me. Most of us, we are scrimping and saving. Guys, I'm baking bread. <laughs> okay, if you need a bread recipe, let me know. I found a very good uh, no-need bread. Uh, I'm baking bread to save money. I mean, we are scrimping and saving the best that we can, most people. Like I said, if you go on social media, a lot of people are now asking the question, how the heck are we making it? And there are people with, with two-person incomes that are like, what are we doing? So these companies are not suffering. It is not a housing shortage. It is not that they lost money during the pandemic. It is greedflation, like Dom said. And I'm actually gonna get into another video uh, soon that I'm gonna post to show that actually they may be hiding vacancies as well. I posted one video already to show that uh, proof that you know the housing shortage is is not real yeah we could always use more but it's not real um in my last video i gave proof that showed that one unit had been free for five months and that there were 30 percent turnover uh just where i live so and that's just within a five month span right we're not talking about a year or anything so one unit open for five months the date kept changing to make it seem like it was just newly available to fake demand um and then also over you know 30 percent of units had given their notice or left within a five month period and that wasn't only that one unit i just used that one as an example but i had a list of them as you could see so let's get further into this again so I just wanted to show you an example, right? $10.1 billion, but 
this is how my rent has changed. I'm giving a real life example here. Um, obviously, I'm not going to give my exact apartment and things like that, some sort of privacy on the internet, but I was already on the news. That's the reason why I feel comfortable showing this. So this is my apartment uh, in Cannery Row in Oregon, right? It is managed by Cushman and Wakefield. It is owned by a company called SR Watt Company. Corporate landlords through and through. A corporation owns it and a corporation does the property management for it. My rent was originally $17.50, right? With $20 for parking. So $17.70 a month. This was the renewal rate. Well, rather the month to month rate because I couldn't sign the lease. Um, if you're unaware of what was going on with that, check out my video where I actually go through um, the exploitive lease that a lot of these landlords um, are, are getting and why you should really check yours. And obviously, if you don't know, check out my GoFundMe, gofundme.com slash priced out, where I actually detail that I have currently a federal complaint against them for discrimination when they were raising my rent 32% versus 15% for all of the other residents that were white. But yeah, so my rent went up almost $1,000. I don't know most people who are making $1,000 more per month. This is my real life situation. If you can give, please give. If you can't, please say a prayer for us. So I want to show this as an example because, you know, there has been this narrative that, oh my gosh, maybe, you know, the landlords, they have to now catch up. They have to raise the rates or raise the rent because of their cost. There's 101 units. When people move out, they're raising them a good deal. You don't need a thousand dollars more per month from a resident to cover your cost. You don't. Here's more information. And when we're talking about the greed. So I told you SR Watt Company owns the building I live in. I'm using them as an example because of the intimate knowledge that I have being here. They have 1.1 million square feet under them as a portfolio. Right. And that's just this one section of the company because they're they're actually five different. They branched off into five different companies. This is the one branch that's now called SR Watt Company. They have retail spaces, multifamily spaces, um, office properties. Sorry, let me get back to this, guys. I don't know why it just went off for a moment. And. The president of the company said that it's a very exciting time to be in the business. Didn't say it's a hard time. Didn't say there's a struggle. He said, this is an exciting time. Exciting means, oh, <laughs> we're getting a lot of profit. So she was talking about how she oversees um, two, two places, two other places. Obviously, they have a portfolio of multifamily real estate, uh, 20,000 square foot for one, 38,000 square foot for another. Um, and it says both are fully occupied, and they experienced no disruption during the pandemic. No disruption. So this idea, this narrative that these companies have been suffering, that, you know, maybe this is why the rents are, have been high and whatnot, you can see that's not true, guys. I wanted to point this one out to you because like I said, the media, they, they skew things. There's all these different articles. And you have to understand the people who are telling the story are them, are the executives. They're the ones that they're interviewing, right? <laughs> these are the people who are going on MSNBC and Fox Business and, and whatnot. They're not going to say, oh, well, you know, we don't really need to make that much. They're not going to do that. Oh, before I forget, this, this, this was the kicker. Let me show you guys. So CEO pay, right? It says Cushman and Wakefield increases CEO John Forrester's pay with more salary and stock. You got an increase, not a decrease. The former chief executive was making 10.6 million. The new CEO got a 49% salary increase. I've never even heard of something like that. <laughs> If you go to your boss and if you make 50,000, you're like, you know, I think I want 75 now. Sure, bud. You make 100,000 and you say, oh, I want 150 now. Just year over year increase. Sure, bud. For your salary. Insane. Increase the stock awards by half over half a million from uh, 
5 million to 5.6. Um, also, the, his pay, 8.6 million, right? And then when you scroll down here, okay, um, they are talking about this other company, CBRE, right? The world's largest commercial real estate brokerage. They released in a proxy statement that their CEO earned more than $25.9 million in total compensation last year, recognizing what the company called its solid financial performance. So they're telling you they're not struggling. They're telling you they're doing great. So guys, when someone tells you who they are, believe them. It's very simple as that. The struggle's not there. This is a false narrative that has been spun by the media. And of course, people are going to latch onto it. And now I'm talking about corporate and landlords because corporate landlords are the biggest landlords right now, right? That's why you, it's really hard to find some place that's owned just by a single owner. And even if it's owned by a single owner, that owner could own a multifamily property. And then they have these large property management companies running it for them. It's no longer the small grandma and grandpa who paid their house off uh, and now are retired and moved to with the grandkids and, you know, to be closer to them and then are just kind of running out the property. That's not what we're talking about. In fact, it's really rare to find that right now. These are corporations, multi-billion dollar corporations with CEOs making tens of millions of dollars a year. So you tell me, why do you think rent is so high? Why are they increasing it? Because it looks like it's just to go into their pockets. So guys, comment below. Please make sure you like, subscribe, ring that bell. I do have my cash app down below, Tour Blessed, and my GoFundMe up top, gofundme.com slash priced out. Let me know what you guys think about it. Are you shocked by this? Or is it just something that you had an idea, but now it's a little bit different really seeing the receipts? Let me know what you guys think, and I'll speak to you on the next one.